Hello, I haven't been able to uh, preach for a while. Uh, I have uh, don't move around very well. Uh, I since the chemo, I uh, don't get away too far from my bathroom, and uh, I and so I really didn't think I would uh, be able to preach anymore. My memory is not as good, uh, but we're going to give this a try. Blake, uh, uh, Blake called me and said that uh, could you uh, try doing one of the uh, video things, and uh, and I I'm only. Uh, 10 feet away from my bathroom, uh, and so I, I'm probably being able to do that, and if I make my memory makes a mistake, uh, I, we've got an erase button on the, on the computer, and uh, my, uh, my grandson, uh, Gage, who is now 19 years old, uh, is, going, is filming it, and uh, we will give it a try, uh, see, if that, see if that works, okay? I'm going to... I've been thinking a little bit about some of the things that have been going on in our culture lately and, uh, and how that relates to what God has said and what God has done. And I'm going to uh, look at it a little bit from, uh, uh, from starting doing with Genesis in the first chapter and the first verse. Uh, and I'm going to read a few verses in here. Uh, just to begin, you're probably fairly familiar with that, but uh, um, this is what, uh, what uh, I like to read and think about a little bit. Uh, this is Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. Uh, first this, God created the heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness. An inky blackness, God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke, light, and the light appeared. God saw the light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day and he named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. God spoke, uh, spoke sky in the middle of the waters. Separate the water from the water. God made sky. He separated the water under the, under the sky from the water above the sky. And there it was. He named the sky the heavens, and the, it was evening, it was morning, day two. God spoke, separate. Uh, water beneath the heavens gather into one place, land appear. And there it was. God named the land earth, and he named the, water, the pool of the water ocean, and God saw that it was good. Thank God that he has not left us alone to know what he is like, but he's revealed himself in a way that we can understand by becoming a man in the person of Christ, and that that revelation is accurate retained for us. And this is holy word. Let us pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, Lord, these thoughts have been going through my mind a uh, considerable length of time, and I pray, Lord, that now your Spirit would help to bring them together and be able to uh, uh, speak them um, with your Spirit and with your direction. In Christ's name, amen. Now, I have always uh, enjoyed the idea of the uh, uh, of the, the way the uh, count of creation is done in, uh, in Genesis. Uh, some people say that it's not quite possible uh, that God could have possibly created the heavens and the earth in six days. That's just not the way it could possibly be done. And I have trouble with the timing there too uh, because I wonder why he took so long. Uh, because an infinite, eternal God, uh, all-powerful, could have done, well, he could have created everything five minutes ago. He would, could have created it with our memories, with our, all the things that we built and stuff like that. He, he could, could have created that five minutes ago uh, because he's that powerful and that infinite. And, and so, uh, you know, the, when you start reading the, the Genesis, you start getting a little more of an idea of how powerful God is and, and a little bit of a, a sense of how, uh, how, how strong he is. 
uh, because it's very easy for us to kind of think of God as like us, uh, is, is temporal, uh, not very uh, strong, and not very able to do many things. Uh, but uh, he, he created everything. He did six days, and as I thought about the six days, that it could be that that was the way he, re he created time. Uh, because before there was no real time. There was a just infinite, uh, always being, always was, always will be. And maybe the, the idea of him doing six days of uh, creating, maybe he began to uh, uh, create time too. So he gave us the sense of time. And it could be that, uh, and, and one of the things that I've uh, thought about too on that is that uh, he, he took a, the first day to create light and he took a, a whole day to create light. And it, he also took a day to create all the heavens and the earth. And you would, you would think that light would be easier. Uh, but as I read quantum physics these days, light might be one of the more complicated things that we have in our existence. Uh, light may have, uh, uh, science, quantum physicists have a kind of a debate uh, to try whether light is matter or if it's energy. In, in some ways it behaves with one and in some way with the other. And it, it could be that the whole universe is, uh, is like, uh, 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 he, that he was, when he was building light, he was building the building blocks for the whole universe, for all of creation. And so he built the building blocks first and then he began to use them to put together the whole of the uh, of eternity, and and that that begins to give a little bit of an idea of how powerful God is uh, as compared to us. Uh, I had a, a time many many years ago, uh, and uh, in the church where I was beginning to think I maybe have to be more active politically. Uh, because this was during the Cold War, and I was just sort of thinking about, uh, uh, you know, if uh, uh, nuclear uh, war could have destroyed the whole of the earth. And and uh, as I was as I was thinking about that, uh, I was thinking maybe I needed to get more active uh, in the political realm and the activist realm. And uh, that was right after the the Christmas Eve service. Uh, and I was, I was thinking about that a little bit and going around snuffing out the candles. And there was one candle that would not snuff out. I would put the snuffer on and then I lift it up and the candle would light again. Uh, and I went, I went, tried it again and again. And then I finally whipped my fingers and squeezed out the candle. And the thought went through my head that if uh, all the nuclear bombs in the world went off, at the same time, it would be easier for God to snuff them out than for me to snuff out that one candle. And, and so maybe I need to talk about this all-powerful God and begin to help that, uh, help bring uh, that into the reality uh, uh, of people's lives, to invite that all-powerful God into your lives. It's kind of strange that uh, God, uh, would not uh, use his power all the time. He, he, he wants us to invite us into his power, to use his power. Uh, Revelation 3.20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens a door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. He would, God, God will begin to change the way we will begin to use some of his power to begin to change the way we are. Uh, one of the things that uh, is in, in also in that early part of Revelation is that uh, uh, is the, the Adam and Eve and eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it, and it could be that, uh, you know, when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they then uh, were uh, like gods. They had their own idea of what was right and what was wrong. And, and, and so uh, 
And God said that if they, if you do that, you will surely die. And, uh, and I don't think he was necessarily punishing them for disobeying them. But because if you, if you, if everybody did what was right in their own eyes and not what was right in God's eyes, uh, we would be, uh, we would actually kind of create a hell. We could not live that way eternally uh, because everybody, uh, and I, I, I think if I begin to look at the world around me uh, right now, I begin to see people, everybody trying to do what is right in their own eyes and, and not to be able to look, bring God into their life, uh, to be able to uh, uh, see the, the reality of the, see the way God might, uh, might do things. And uh, to me, it's a little bit like a, uh, uh, you know, uh, if there's a baseball game or there's a playground game. Uh, and sometimes when you have a, when you just sort of uh, don't have the necessary creative league uh, of baseball, but everybody kind of, uh, you, is a playground baseball, you just might uh, make up your own rules and uh, not have the rules of, uh, that everybody would have. Uh, everybody would use. Uh, and so usually the people that are the loudest and the strongest and the most aggressive would make up the rules uh, that then everybody had to play with. And I, I kind of feel like we're living in a world that is a playground baseball game uh, where everybody is kind of making up their own rules and they haven't looked at the creator uh, who made all of the universe and haven't invited him into their lives. Uh, when uh, uh, when I went when I studied in seminary, uh, when we, we started to study the Bible, uh, I was kind of surprised we, we started at, at Genesis 12, not at one. Uh, and at 12, you talked a little bit more about a God calling Abraham, and it would, you talked a little bit more about God working with men, uh, a lot more, and you didn't. But you, you sort of started thinking about God being a uh, men adding power to God somehow. And if you don't read the first 11 chapters in, in the book, you can start getting that feeling uh, so that uh, you, don't, uh, uh, you, you, you don't see realize the power that God has. And, and, that, and that when he comes in, he will begin to change the way the world is and the way the world and the way our lives are and uh if, if we once we invite him in he is all powerful but he he still stands at the door and knocks he won't come in and force himself uh on us uh we have to invite him in to begin to live that way and, and one of the things that he does when he when we invite god in is that he begins to uh uh, uh, well, well, like when, when Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and everybody, uh, and they're sort of creating their own hell uh, by living forever, I think God gave death uh, so that you could only do that for so long. Uh, and and, and when, he, when we start giving him into our lives, start inviting him into our lives, uh, we start to... Uh, uh, beginning to live life as he would see it. Uh, one of the things as I was reading about the uh, uh, some of the news uh, and on, um, about the, the coronavirus, uh, they, were, they were talking about uh, uh, the one of the titles of one of the news articles was uh, uh, "Death is our destiny," and and there is a reality of that and God gave that reality because of our our idea of good and evil not his being his idea of good and evil and and but in death has been our destiny and as a matter of fact when you look at the news about the coronavirus you keep talking about how long uh, how much people are dying how many people are dying with that and and it, it, but when you start inviting Christ into your life uh, you start having eternal life. Uh, my, when I had cancer, uh, I, uh, I wasn't really particularly afraid of, of dying uh, because I had eternal life uh, in, in, in Christ. And I, I basically, the, 
uh, went to the doctor and he gave me some some years uh, not life uh, and and but, but we have to begin to when we bite Christ into our lives we begin to live life uh, and, and, and once you begin to see that you maybe have a little bit different point of view of uh, the coronavirus and some of the other things that are maybe going on in our lives. Uh, you still uh, try to do the best you can with things. Uh, I, I, I'm retired as a pastor, uh, but I'm not retired as a grandfather. Uh, and a whole lot of other things that I do in my life, uh, just with family. And God, I can, I can use God, I can use that to, to share uh, the Lord. And, and we have, and, and one of the other things that is going on in our lives right now is, is racially. And inviting God into our lives uh, also helps to deal with that. Uh, when I went to seminary, I had only ever been to church about four years. I, I, our family never went to church and when, uh, when I was growing up. And, and I became a Christian and my pastor, Ben Hayden, uh, helped me to be able to grow in my relationship to Christ. But I didn't know anything about how a church organization functioned or how it worked. And so uh, I, 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 when I went to seminary, I, I, I didn't know anything about that. As a matter of fact, when I, we were sharing in our Sunday night service and uh, I mentioned that I was planning on going to seminary, I think that God had called me to seminary. And uh, one person asked me, uh, uh, "Are you have you already gone under care of presbytery?" And I, I asked the person, "What's a presbytery?" I, I didn't know at all how uh, a church put together. And I went to seminary, and I I thought maybe the best thing for me to do was to become an associate pastor or an assistant pastor, so that I could learn how the church organizes and, and works. And, and I, I can begin to work, work that way. And, and when you're in the seminary of your, your last year or so, you, know, you tend to preach more in churches uh, that are without pastors. And uh, you, you, you're either churches that are looking for a pastor or churches that uh, can't afford a full-time pastor. And you tend to go around to different churches. And I, uh, um, I, w I was doing that. And there was one church that I went to in Dublin, Georgia, which is uh, not too far from Macon, Georgia. And I, I went there on, on Sunday morning and uh, uh, it was an all black church. Uh, I, and I had my own little racial experience there. Uh, and uh, it was kind of strange because I, I, I went, got up and uh, looked over the congregation and I saw Sandy, my, my wife sitting out there. And uh, I said, gee, she's awfully pale. And uh, I, I, you know, it, it, it was a different kind of an experience uh, for me. And that you know, there was, it was also different for them because uh, my wife said that there were two uh, little girls that kept looking at her all, they turned around and looked at her all through the service to see what a white person worshiped like. And, and we, we we, continue, we did there, and the first time we went out, to, they used to take you out to dinner after service, and we went to a restaurant, and uh, we went, uh, uh, they bought us lunch, and then uh, the next time, I, they, kept, they invited us back, and the next time they invited us back, uh, one of the people uh, asked us to, be, to come to their house, and we came to their house, and uh, we ate dinner with them there at their, at their home. And uh, Sandy and I, on the way back, uh, said that, you know, when we looked around, uh, we, we were talking about our, our experience there, and we both said, you know, uh, black people buy their church, they buy their furniture at the same place white people buy. It, 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 we were expecting it to be a whole lot different, and it, and it wasn't, and it, it was very much the same. And, uh, and then we, I preached, they had invited me back several times. And, uh, and uh, uh, then, they, then they started pushing me to become their pastor. And uh, I, you know, I was planning on being an assistant pastor to learning about organization. And I don't know if I was really ready for this. 
uh, and uh, and also uh, and I wasn't sure if I could be uh, uh, do very well at being a, a, a white uh, pastor in a black church uh, in the South. Uh, but they kept uh, saying that uh, we we would be working. And at that particular time, it was about uh, a year after Martin Luther King was assassinated, and uh, and and so a lot of the black pastors were pushing to be able to do more uh, social action uh, type things and uh, to, to, to change the political thing. In this church, particularly, they said that we we just want someone not to be able to get us into a whole lot of political action, but someone who would be able to, who would just tell us about Jesus, who would teach the Bible. And, and, and I think you think you can do that. And as I talked about it and thought about it, I, I realized that I just didn't know if I could take on that particular thing and uh, could be a, 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 the white pastor in a black church. Uh, and, uh, and I decided that I needed to uh, be an associate assistant pastor. And uh, I've been an assistant pastor for several years when one of the, uh, I was a delegate to General Assembly. And one of the elders from that church in Dublin uh, was a General Assembly. And we palled around a lot. And he said that, you know, he, he told me, he, he said, I, I'm sorry you didn't come to the church there. Uh, he said we uh, we really wanted to be able to to bring Christ in stronger, and even in the racial situation, uh, when we invite Christ into it, uh, we become we become different. Uh, I, I'm always intrigued by the fact as I read in the Old Testament, there are a whole lot of genealogies that I, that are the names of people that I can't pronounce. <laughs> And uh, I usually like to read it by myself rather than having to do it in a, in a church service. Uh, but when when Christ comes into your life, uh, in the New Testament, there was only one genealogy. There were no more. Uh, and the only genealogy was that of Christ. And, and, and it was in, it, in, in, in a, in when it ended with Christ, there was no more genealogies. Uh, and it could be that what God was planning to do was that he was going to turn us all into brothers and sisters uh, so that we wouldn't be divided by racial things, by intellectual things, by any of the things, but we would all be brothers and sisters. And I think when we Christ into our lives, and Christ has to help with the racial thing too, so that we can begin uh, that he can make us brothers and sisters, but he won't force that onto us. It's like he, I say, he stands at the door and knocks, and we have to open the door uh, to our lives to be able to focus our lives on life, eternal life that God has given in Christ, and focus our lives on the, uh, the life that he has given in Christ as we are become brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I hope I haven't talked too long. I don't know how long it is. I should have been watching a little more carefully. Uh, but I'd just like to close this with, uh, with prayer. Pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for your power, for your majesty, for your glory. And Lord, too often we, we tend to think that we give you strength. And Lord, it's the other way around. As we invite you into our lives, you begin to give us your strength and your life and your spirit. And we pray, Lord, that uh, uh, we would more and more invite you into all areas of our lives. For it's in Christ's name that we pray.